Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and from the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, we're going to be talking about what to do in the event of a coronary air embolism. Our patient is a 70-year-old man who presented with an acute coronary syndrome. He underwent fairly routine PCI of the mid-RCA. The PCI itself uh, was uneventful. However, on final injection, a fairly substantial number of air bubbles were accidentally injected into the RCA. The patient uh, became uh, bradycardic. Um, what should we do now? Well, a small embolus uh, is uh, usually benign and resolves on its own. A large embolus, on the other hand, uh, can potentially be catastrophic and can cause acute ischemia, electromechanical dissociation, bradycardia, VTVF, cardiac arrest, uh, and even death. So what do we do if we do have a large air embolism? Um, there are several strategies. First, you try to shrink the bubble. Uh, this is most commonly done either by giving 100% oxygen or by using a coronary wire uh, to break up the bubble. Uh, giving 100% oxygen works because nitrogen is the largest component of air. So a higher FiO2 causes the air bubbles to shrink by allowing nitrogen to diffuse uh, down this concentration gradient uh, out of the bubble. A second strategy is to try to push the bubbles through the coronary uh, system. Uh, this is most commonly done by forceful injections of saline into the coronary artery. Um, intracoronary epinephrine is also another option. Epinephrine is actually a fairly potent uh, coronary vasodilator, and it has been used for no reflow. And uh, it is typically given uh, in 100 microgram boluses uh, up to 400 micrograms. Another approach is to try to aspirate the bubbles. Uh, this is most commonly done with an aspiration thrombectomy catheter, although especially large bubbles can also be aspirated using a guide liner or even using the guiding catheter itself. Um, for especially massive cases of air embolism, the use of a hyperbaric uh, chamber is also thought to be helpful, assuming the patient is stable enough to get there. Uh, and obviously, you'll need to uh, provide the patient with hemodynamic support as needed. So take home messages. First, uh, prevent bubbles. Uh, be very meticulous about preparing your manifold so that no bubbles get injected in the first place. If you do end up with a large uh, coronary air embolism, here is the approach that we typically take. Immediately, uh, administer 100% oxygen and forcefully inject saline into the coronary artery to flush through the bubbles. Consider using intracoronary epinephrine. Then uh, get a coronary wire in there to break up the bubbles and use a thrombectomy catheter or guide extension catheter to suck the bubbles out. Provide hemodynamic support as needed. And once the patient stabilizes, if there is still no reflow or slow reflow, uh, then use uh, intracoronary vasodilators as you would normally would to reestablish flow uh, for these cases. So how did our patient do? Well, he did fine. Uh, he was uh, bradycardic for a few seconds, but thankfully uh, his heart rate quickly returned to normal. Uh, flow remained to me three. And again, thankfully, it was as if nothing happened. Thank you for watching.